past 20 years, we lost 750,000 people. 750,000 people by earthquakes. It is actually much more than the combined the uh, hurricane death to the flood and drought and everything combined. It's the most lethal weapon out there, actually. And uh, so that's our job to actually see that the, what, what happened out there and how we can actually to reduce this risk. Now, this picture here is uh, taken from Mexico City, which we had an earthquake uh, in September. We lost almost 400 people. The earthquake destroyed about 44 buildings and damaged 3,000 to 4,000 buildings out there. And here's a picture of it. You're going to see the, the, this is the, the old concrete structure. And this is, the, you're going to see the, the down the column started buckling there and started cracking it. And here's a collapse. That's how the building collapsed. That's how the old concrete building collapsed. And here, this building you saw, it's a ground floor collapse in there. That reason is what we call soft story, which means like a tall, high lobby area. That's make it really weak. And that's where the where they started collapsing like that. So in Mexico, any buildings built prior to 1985 is actually pretty dangerous because they had an earthquake in 1985 and the building code changed quite a bit. But before that, it was very dangerous. And uh, this is one of the buildings we went in. So as a California Seismic Safety Commissioner, my mission was to first assess the city, what happened to it. But at the same time, the mandate is assist the public if there's a need. So this one site, the uh, uh, engineers and the Mexican uh, government ask us to uh, assist technically. And because what happened here is the, uh, this building collapsed. It was like this. Used to be an um, eight-story building. Now down to become two-story. And you can kind of see the layer of concrete. That used to be a floor. Now, so this is a built before 1985. So it's a non-ductile concrete structure. That's why it's collapsed like that. And here, it's a really fragile state. And there's the uh, plane of aftershocks going on. At the time, there's about 100 uh, rescue workers looking to this building to uh, reach to the uh, missing people. This building itself killed about 50 people. And when I got there, still 20 people were missing. And here's the uh, med engineer, chief engineer on the site. His name was Jesus, or Jesus. It's a fantastic fellow, just amazing. Such an expert, such a bravery. And it's just, he's doing this 100% volunteer effort. And he's taking a lot of risk out there for himself to, to get the bodies, essentially, because all the families are still waiting, you know? There's always a hope. So this is how he actually engineered to take the building off from top. You can see that the crane, like a little chain come off, that's a support by crane top there. And I just cut in the pieces and I remove from top. And you see in the back, uh, this building, the steel stairs, that stairs does used to be serving this building. So you can see the building kind of went down there. And I met that many people actually saved their lives just running away from this building, used the stairs down to the ground, actually. Now let's go to the uh, Sichuan, China. These are pictures I took. So there is mine to nine earthquake happened in 2008, Sichuan, China. It was just a bad one. Many schools collapsed. The picture you've seen here is one of a high school. A whole bunch of look like kind of a gray spaghetti, almost like, you know, floor can, it's hanging out. That's a floor it used to be. You know, this school alone, 3,000 students, I bet. And uh, I was there like one week after. And uh, as a structural engineer, my really uh, mission suddenly became the um, uh, helping the rescue worker to get the bodies out. I have a small kids too. You know, they're, they're just like my kids, you know. It doesn't make sense to me that schools become like that. The family members actually tried to find the um, belongings from, from the kids who, who's missing or dead. Schools, why it's so dangerous? Well, that reason is the, uh, uh, you can kind of see, kind of picture it. The classroom is large, a lot of window. So architecture kind of make a little weak, you know, things going on. They're usually kind of built pretty rapidly by the public works. Now, this is the only China issue, by the way. In Nepal, earthquake in 2015, 7,000 schools have collapsed. Fortunately, that earthquake happened Saturday, so therefore no students were there. I mean, that would be tragic, right? And this earthquake, uh, Sichuan earthquake, was the happening in a Monday afternoon, so that's why it's just so bad. California, too. 
We have also a lot of dangerous schools, by the way, believe it or not. Those schools were built in the 1940s, 50s, 60s. They're not safe. And we know those. We have actually a list of those schools which need to be strengthening. Go to the Oregon, Washington. We have a schools made of unreinforced masonry bricks. You know how dangerous those things are? These buildings, those old concrete buildings and those unreinforced masonry buildings, they're essentially what I call death box. That's what it is. And our kids in there. Let's go to the uh, uh, New Zealand, Christchurch. This is a picture taken in 2010, right before the earthquake, actually. It was a vibrant city of about uh, 400,000 people. It's a beautiful town. It's just heritage buildings. It's a modern city. Right after the earthquake of 6.3, 2011, it became a look like this. They lost about 2,000 buildings out of about 2,400 buildings. Why is that? You can imagine maybe a uh, place like a really you know, remote area of Nepal, you know, schools could be, or well, buildings can be dangerous by New Zealand. Why are they bad? Are they bad engineers, bad contractors? No, they're actually really good. Their building code, their technology, and their engineers, their engineers are probably one of the best in the whole world. Maybe besides the you know, Japanese engineer. Could be, could be a little bit, a little better. But besides that, <laughs> they're, they're good. Why is that? Because the building code is. There's a myth. Myth is building codes provide you the earthquake-proof building. That's right. If you're going to hire a guy like me and say, hey, design some building, and some new big high-rise building, you just think it's earthquake-proof. Uh-uh. It's not like that. Look at this building here. It's kinked a little bit, tilted a little bit. What happened at the 11th level, three columns ruptured. And when they ruptured, this whole thing's tilted. No one died. But you can't fix a building like this, so they have to take it down. So building code can provide the, what we call minimum life safety protection, but it cannot provide the uh, functionality after the major earthquake. So it's a big deal. Here's a picture in LA. Uh, he, we have the uh, Miyamoto International our company has office in one of the uh, uh, high-rise uh, buildings here, 51st level. It's beautiful space. But if the earthquake happens, you know what's going to happen? It's going to swing, swing, swing so a lot. It's probably not going to collapse, but most likely it's going to be like, like, like this. Kind of occupy the building. So for our case, yes, big earthquake in LA or San Francisco, we're going to probably lose a few thousand people. There's no question about it because we've got a whole bunch of old concrete buildings out there. But also, the economical impact is tremendous because there's no place to work or live. You know, we have to somehow fix them. But if you've got the 70-story buildings doing this, it would be very difficult to fix them. It really has to be that way. I said no. Actually, the, we have technology can address those issues. So yeah, building code is there, but what we can do is we can do high-performance earthquake engineering. Now, this building is the, uh, the theme building in the LAX. That's one of the most beautiful, efficient airport in the world. And this is the, the concrete structure built in the 1950s. And it's seismically dangerous. So what we did there is we add this chunks of steel. It's about four feet thick of steel, end up to about 30 feet diameter. And we put that on top of what we call isolators. It's essentially a roller. So what happened is the, if the earthquake started shaking it, this big mass going in the opposite direction and act as a counter weight almost. So it reduced the reaction of the building below. And its weight is almost a three Boeing 747. Sounds like crazy things to do, right? But it actually works. So it's, uh, you know, there's things like that you can do. So you don't have to interrupt the uh, uh, business or anything like that to do things like that. And here's a Sacramento, California. This is a building built in the 1970s. This is one of those death boxes, I call, the old non ductor concrete structures. But there, with some dampening devices like that. What it is is a shock absorber. And if you see your car, you get the spring. That's what it is, essentially. So when you put it in, take a look, man, this is a beautiful thing, actually. The purple thing is the dampers. You're going to see earthquake starts shaking, start shaking, the simulation of it. Then before and after picture, you're looking at it. So this before picture, it's not going to happen like this because it's going to collapse. But you can see that the, the movement is much less after you put dampers. You see, it's a beautiful thing, <laughs> you know? Structural engineering can be very sexy. That's what you're looking here. You see, she's in a, one of the most... Uh, safest place you know, out there. Here's a takeaway for you. One, 
the building code is just following the building code is just not good enough. If you're going to spend, I don't know, $300,000, million dollars to buy it the condo or apartment, I think your assets should be protected. You know? And two, the older concrete buildings, we have a thousand of these in California and the West Coast and everywhere. Those are unbelievably dangerous. We got to do something about them. And three, to make these things safer and much more resilient is not expensive as what seems. I'm telling you, three to five percent more cost, you can make a much, much, much better building. Now, last one, school buildings. That's so dangerous. We got to do something about it. So a couple years ago, we formed the um, a nonprofit organization called Miyamoto Global Disaster Relief, and this organization is focused on make it safe for the schools. We worked in the schools in Haiti and Nepal and many other places come. I think you can be part of a solution to doing this. Join us this movement to make things safer out there. It's not that difficult as it seems. That's it. Thank you very much.